Welcome RPA champions. In this video, I'm going to show you a introduction to Microsoft Power Automate Desktop 2023. The tool has undergone some really important changes and is also really important for you to upskill your skills and learn how to automate repetitive things. Now, this is just part of what you are going to learn. Why? Because uh, Microsoft Power Automate Desktop now also interacts a lot with artificial intelligence. Now, when you combine automating repetitive and manual tasks together with artificial intelligence and automating cognitive tasks, then you can achieve end-to-end -end automation. By the end of this video, you are going to be able to create basic automations that can interact with the browser, that can extract information from the browser, and that can also push buttons and do all kinds of different things, just like a human would do. Now, Microsoft Power Automate Desktop is a automation tool from Microsoft. It's completely free. If you have Microsoft, it should be already installed on your computer and it's going to allow you to perform tasks like the ones that you are seeing right now on my computer. Now, I have created an automation to send different messages to people on LinkedIn. Now, I found it a very boring and consuming task, so I created this automation. Now, doing is repeating a manual task that otherwise I would have spent uh, hours on. I'm contacting contacts on LinkedIn to share with them a solution about generative AI that I have created. Now, doing this manually has uh, said really long. That's why Microsoft Power Automate Desktop is going to save countless hours from repetitive tasks. Now, let's get into it and see how this tool works. First of all, Microsoft Power Automate Desktop is going to allow you to start from some examples. Now, once you have downloaded the tool, you are going to have to log in with your Microsoft account. And after that, you will be able to use the tool. Now, let's stop this automation that are going to show us basic functionality and how already some processes are created. There are some very useful processes, so I do uh, advise you that if you're creating a, that you check out the examples page because you're going to find some useful examples, such as, for example, opening a web page in the correct way, not in the way that I'm going to show you. Now, what do I mean in the correct way? I mean with error handling and with all kinds of uh, bells and whistles to make your process not fail. Now, it is important that your processes most likely is not going to fail. Uh, why? Because we're going to build it really and uh, in a really short amount of time, the least possible actions that we have. So for example, in uh, a template to open would be something like this from Microsoft. So it has uh, a lot of comments, it has functionality and so on. However, you could just achieve the same functionality just with one action. Now, let's start with a new flow. So let's start with a new process that we are going to do something with Microsoft Power Automate, such as open a web browser. Let's call this open web browser. It is going to load a new Canva for us. So a Canva is where we're going to be creating our automation. Now, keep in mind that you have to be a PhD software developer to be able to use this platform. I'm just joking. There is absolutely no code involved in whatever we are going to be doing. However, if you know code, it is going to come in handy if you want to save time or implement certain specific features. You can import code in here. So right here, this is where we're going to be building our automation. On the left side, this is where we have different actions, such as, for example, like open a web browser. And the way that we would interact with this is, for example, like launch a new Chrome, we would drag and drop it. And a configuration panel would appear where we would configure the functionality of that action. So, for example, we would insert a URL that we want to navigate to, uh, advanced options, and uh, on the right side, variables that are created choices. Variables are containers for information. So if we need to store some information like a link or we're extracting some information, we would see it right here. Also, right next to the down below the variables, we have UI elements. UI elements are interactions or connections that we create with a browser or with an application or with anything that we want to interact with. 
and also we have images. Now we can also use pixels on our screen to automate and to move the mouse to those pixels. So this is this we will do with different images and this part would be for here. Now using images is uh, relatively complex and this is done for the hardest where it's really hard to integrate with the application or with a specific web page. However, for 99% of the processes, uh, we will not have to use image domain. We will be able to do it in different, much quicker ways. Let's get into it. <coughs> Browser. Let's open Google Chrome and search for something. This is going to be the most simple automation that we can build. We're going to use Google Chrome, we're going to launch a new instance, or we can attach to a running instance or a running browser that is already executed. We are going to launch a new one. We're going to make it normal instead of maximized or minimized. And also in the advanced features, we're going to leave everything as it is. We can clear the cookies, clear the cache if we have different users to log in and so forth. So all of this could be done automatically. Now, remember that the least steps that you can create inside of your automation, the better it is. Why? Because there's going to be less actions for you to configure and to create. Therefore, when you are thinking about how to create a process, always think about how you can save time by saving automation steps. So instead of maybe starting uh, your process and Google to another page and then extract information, go directly to the page and extract information directly from the page. So Google, normal, save, and this is our first automation. Now to run our robot, we can run it from right here, but we can also run our robot from our control panel. Now, if we go back to the, uh, the robot is running Google, we're going to let it uh, sit in the background, run this process again, such as open web browser. We would go from the home to my flows, open browser and run it. Right now it's blocked because I'm editing it, but we could trigger it right from here. There is other ways where we could schedule our processes, but we would leave this uh, for a, another video. Uh, happen when we combine Microsoft Power Cloud with Microsoft Power Automate Desktop, and then we work uh, together with these tools. So we have opened our, everything is working so far. So the next step would be to uh, insert something inside of, for example, Let's launch our process again. Do is insert information here and then click on the Google search button. Now to do this, we can do it different ways. We can drag and drop different actions. So for example, uh, we need to click on a button that click a link on a web page, this button right here and insert text would be uh, right here, web form filling populate text field on a web page. However, there is a easier way to create a skeleton uh, automation for your robot with the uh, record button. With the record, you can record different actions and then create an automation automatically. It's a great way to get started. So let's try that exactly. So right here, we are going to left click in here and then Populate text to write, and we're gonna add text. After that, we are going to click on the search button and click on done right here. We have created our first automation. Let's see what the recorder has created for us. It created two comments in the beginning. We are going to get rid of those because we like to keep things short and clean. However, if you are building something, it's good practice to add comments because later on you want to remember what is happening. Uh, it created also a new home. However, we already created it in the beginning. They are identical. So we're going to get rid of that also. And we can also see that it has created a populate text field on a web page and a press button on a web page. Now let's run this process and see if our automation is working and if we were able to create an automation that automates Google without knowing any code and in just a couple of clicks and it has worked, ladies and gentlemen. And now, for example, we could extract all of the information, click on another page or do pretty much anything that we want to do. To learn all of the different functionalities, it's pretty straightforward. 
uh, all you will have to do is you would have to read what it says right here for different functionalities or search right here or search on the Microsoft Power Automate page or just ask ChatGPT what kind of action you would have to do to perform different actions. Now, let me show you an example of a more complex process. So the process that I showed you in the beginning. Complex, so this process is using loops, it is using variables, it is using weights, all very simple things. Let me walk you through this process. Now, in the beginning of the process, we ask for a couple of inputs. So we look for the display uh, input dialog, we drag it and then we configure it in this way. So in this example, let's walk through the process and see what is happening step by step. So the process starts, it asks us for a uh, for what kind of person on LinkedIn. So we are going to add, for example, like CFO. After that, it asks us for another information. So this information is about a geographic location uh, for link for LinkedIn. So what we are doing right here, we are creating different variables. And as you can see here, different variables are getting are going to get filled up as we complete this inputs. So let's click on the other one. And as you can see, user input two has became this. And this is going to be the message that I'm going to be sending on LinkedIn. I can find you the message right here, change it however I want. Now remember, I won't be running this from here. I will be running this from the control panel. So I wouldn't even have to be looking at this code. Let's click on OK. And what would happen right now? We would launch a new Chrome. Now let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at this. We're going to and take a look at the launch new Chrome. So the launch new Chrome is using something that is called a, uh, we are going to a right here, we have a variable. So what is a variable? And right here also we have a variable. Variable are those pieces of information that I filled out previously, such as the location and also the CFO. Now those two pieces of information were added here, the keywords was added for the CFO, and for the location, the location of uh, Switzerland. Uh, under the, now let's exit this and see the next steps. So we have a loop here. <coughs> the loop through all of the different pages. So here we have different pages and this loop is just going to go through page one to other pages. And then we have another loop that is basically just going to go through the different connect buttons until it runs out of connect buttons and click on each connect button. Once it clicks, it's going to add a note, add the message that we saw previously, send the message and go on to the next step. So this would be the click link on web page button. After that, we wait for two seconds just to make sure that everything has been loaded correctly. And then we click on add a note, we populate the text field and then we send the message. We have a little bit of error handling also involved. So for example, in case that we cannot find this button right here that we found on error, we are going to skip this button and just go to the next, uh, go to the next action. So to the label, which is skip and just try to find the next button. So this is it. This is how simple it is to create automations and save you countless hours of time. Now there is solutions that charge you uh, quite a bit of money for automations or just for using uh, LinkedIn automated solutions are uh, limited that are and so forth. Now this is completely free. You don't have to use it on LinkedIn or on any other solutions. You can use it in however way you want on whatever kind of uh, uh, repetitive process. Let's see this Let's see this process one more time in action. However, we are going to let's see this process one more time in action. We are going to search for and we are going to keep the location the same and we're going to keep the message the same. And let's see what happens. So we are navigating to this link right here with this address. We are going to click on each one of the buttons, add a note add a message right now. We are waiting two seconds, adding a message, waiting another two seconds, and then the robot is going to click on connect and so on. It is going to continue 
clicking on all of the different connect buttons that are on the page and after that it is going to change page. Thank you so much for watching this introduction about Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. I hope that this helped you get started with Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. Now there's lots more things to learn. Uh, I suggest that you watch my other videos as well, that you check out the Microsoft Power Automate training online as well. And feel free to ask me questions if you have any uh, requirements that you are willing or projects that you are building on. Check out my courses also on Microsoft Power Automate Desktop on Udemy and Skillshare. You are going to learn a great deal about Check out my course in Udemy and Skillshare about Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. There are different topics that are being covered and right now is very important to upskill your skills. Why? Because soon a person that knows how to use AI and new technologies is going to be doing the work of 10 people and those are the ones that are going to be most paid and have a good career. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, RPA champions. I will see you in the next video.